All right, guys and gals, I'm going to teach you all how to create a very basic GUI program. GUI is an acronym for Graphical User Interface. It's a visual program that we can see and interact with, kind of like this. So we'll be using the J Option Pane class and be creating a few message dialog boxes. Before we begin, we'll need an import. So outside of your class, let's type this import Java X dot swing dot J option pane so we will be working with the j option pane class now what we would like to do is type in some user information into a sort of dialog box and we'll store this as a string variable called name kind of like what we did on the video on user input string name and in order to create an input dialog box we're going to type the name of the class j option pane dot and there's a few options what we would like is show input dialog and you can really just pick any of these and we can type in a message so with this message let's state enter your name and when we run this this is what we have we have this small gui dialog box and we can type in our name and submit it but it currently doesn't do anything so let's create another message dialog box that will display our name along with a message. So J option pane dot show message dialog. For now, you can just type in null comma and then a message. Let's say hello plus name and let's try it. So our first dialog box is the show input dialog message and we can type in our name and submit a name and our second box here is a message dialog box. This just displays some information such as a string of text and it says hello bro. This time let's ask for an age and store this value within an integer variable called age. int age equals and we can just copy all of this j option pane dot show input dialog and the message will be enter your age. There is one issue though. When you use the show input dialog box, it's going to return a string and we're attempting to assign the string into an integer variable. So what we would need to do is convert this to an integer and there is actually a method to do that. So what I'm going to do is use the integer wrapper class and use the parse int method and within the parentheses, we're going to take all of this and copy it within our parse int method and then add a semicolon at the end. So this will return a string based on what the user types in and the parse int method will convert it to an integer that we can store it within our integer variable of age. And then we can display this. So let's display this with another message dialog box. J option pane dot show message dialog null will be the first argument and our message will be you are plus age plus years old and let's try it enter your name bro press ok hello bro then when we click ok again it's going to go to our next input dialog box enter your age let's say that i'm 18 click ok you are 18 years old. Now let's try this with a double data type. This time, let's create a variable called maybe height. This will be a double value and the variable name will be height. So since we're working with double values, we're going to change integer to double, double with a capital D dot parse double. And the message will be enter your height. And our message dialog will be you are height. And let's say this is in centimeters tall. So we have to be sure that we're getting the right data type because when you use the input dialog box, it's going to return a string. So if you're attempting to assign that string to a certain data type, you have to convert it to that specific data type. So let's try this and to your name, bro. Okay. Hello, bro. What is your age? Let's say I'm 18. Press OK. You are 18 years old. Enter your height. I don't know what a good height is. 240 centimeters. And then click OK. 
you are 240.0 centimeters tall. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, what we have made is a very simple graphical user interface for fun. This is completely optional at this point, but we will be learning more about GUIs later in this playlist. Alrighty then, guys and gals. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a few useful methods of the math class. To begin, we'll need maybe two numbers. Let's say that these will be double variables, double x. Let's set this equal to 3.14 and double y. We will set this to, let's say, negative 10. All right, the first useful method is the max method. This will find the larger of two numbers. So in order to use the max method, we're going to type math with a capital M dot. And there's a few recommendations here. What we would like is the max method. That is right here. So there's a few to choose from. We can compare two integers, two long values, two floats, and two doubles. I'm going to compare the values of x and y. So I'm going to put these within the parentheses of my max method, and then we can either display the result or assign this to a new variable. Let's say double z equals math.max, and we'll compare x and y and assign the larger number to variable z. And we will display the result. System.out.println z. And the larger of these two numbers is in fact x, which is 3.14. And there is also a min method, which will find the lesser of two values, which is variable y, which is negative 10. Another useful method is the absolute function method. It's just abs, like abs, six pack abs. And we'll pass in y. And this will display the absolute value of y, which is 10. So the absolute value is basically a number without the negative sign. I'm not a mathematician, so. I could be wrong in that definition. All right, we also have the square root function. That is SQRT. The square root of y, I don't know what the square root of negative 10 is, but we're about to find out. Uh, I don't know, I guess that didn't work. Let's change y to 10. 3.16, blah, 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 blah. All right, that is the square root function. We can also round. Let's round x. So x rounded is 3.0. On the other hand, seal, like ceiling, this will always round up. So 3.4 or 3.14 always rounded up is 4. And floor will always round down. So 3.14 always rounded down is 3.0. Here's a project that we can work on. Let's create a program that will find the hypotenuse of a triangle, and we will ask the user for side x and side y. So to begin, let's declare two variables, double x and double y. Actually, I take that back. Let's declare double z as well, because z will be the result, the hypotenuse. We'll also need a scanner to accept some user input. Scanner, scanner equals new scanner within the parentheses. We're going to type system.in. We'll need an import, so include this import at the top. Import java.util.scanner. We'll need a prompt for side x and side y. We can do that with a print line statement. Enter side x. I can't type today and we will store the result within variable x. x equals, we need some user input, scanner dot next double, because we would like a double value. Let's repeat the process for side y. Enter side y, we'll store the result within variable y. Now here's the tricky part. There is a mathematical formula to calculate the hypotenuse given two angles, well, two sides of a triangle. So this is what we're gonna do. First, we'll multiply x times x plus y times y. Then we need to put this within the square root function of the math class. Math, make sure it's with a capital M, dot SQRT. And we are going to take all of this and place this within the square root function. And we will assign this to our 
variable of z. So z equals math dot square root x times x plus y times y. And with a print line statement, we can display the hypotenuse is plus z. That should be good. Oh, then it's good practice to close your scanner. I always forget to do that, although it's not necessary. Scanner.close. All right, let's test this. Enter side x, that is 4. Enter side y, let's say 5. The hypotenuse is 6.4 and some change. All right, so that's just a simple program that you can make using a function of the math class. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to be generating some random values, some random integers, doubles, and Boolean values. So if you're interested in game design at all, this video is a must for you. So in order to use random values, we should probably import the random class font within the library. So outside of the class, this is what we're gonna type. We're going to import java.util.random semicolon and now we have access to the random class and that provides us a few options we need an instance of the random class for us to use within the main method we're going to create an instance of the random class by typing random with a capital r it's the same name as the class random we need a name for this instance let's call it random all lowercase kind of like what we did with that video on scanners random random equals new random that's kind of random then a set of parentheses, then a semicolon. We now have access to this random instance to generate some random values for us. But there's a disclaimer here. These are not true random numbers, but something called pseudo random numbers, which are pretty darn close. So I just wanted to give you that disclaimer before we got started, so you don't call me a liar. Let's generate a random integer and store this within an integer variable like int x int x equals and to generate a random integer we're going to type the name of our random instance random dot next int there's also a few others like next boolean next double next float i'll get to those later what we would like for now is next int and then we will display the result with a print line statement we will display the value of x so the results are on a scale between, I would say, just under negative 2 billion to just over positive 2 billion. So you'll probably want to limit that. Let's pretend that we're going to roll a six-sided dice. So to limit the scale or the size of the random number that we'll generate, we can pass in a value to our next int method. So within the parentheses of our next int method, we'll limit the size of the integer that's going to generate. If we would like a six-sided dice, we're going to place six here. But there's one catch with this though. This will generate a random number between zero and five because computers always start with zero. And let's see if I can roll a zero. Nope, there we go. All right, so one way to solve this is that if we want the numbers one through six, we can just add one. So now we'll get a random number between one and six, just like that. This time, let's generate a random double value. For now, I'll turn this line into a comment and let's create a new variable called double y. Double y equals random dot next, where is it, double and we will display the value of y. Next double is going to give us a random value between zero and one. So this probably has some uses for something. What that is, I'm not really sure, but hey, you know you can do this now. Let's also generate a random Boolean value. So Boolean z equals random dot next Boolean. And we will display the value of z. So this is going to give us either true or false. Well, everybody, that's how we can use the random class to generate some pseudo random value. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like it, then press the like button. Share it with your friends or anyone who wants to make his career in Java. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comment section is all yours. This is the fifth part of this series. For more parts from this series, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. 
Thanks for watching.